My name is Steve Shooter. I'm a professor at Bucknell University. I teach mechanical engineering. In particular, I teach design. And so when you think about what do engineers do, fundamental to engineering is design. So engineers design stuff. So as a professor of engineering, I teach students how to design stuff. Something else professors do, as, as a professor, I'm also a researcher. So my research is in how to design stuff. So looking at better ways to design different stuff. In addition to being both a professor that's a teacher and a researcher, I am also a practicing engineer. So I also actually design stuff. Now this is, as Mr. West said, uh, this project goes along with some of my research and it's actually supported by the National Science Foundation, which is a government organization, to explore how we can use the cyber infrastructure. That's a big word and I'm going to talk about that a little more later and how we can use the cyber infrastructure to support activities along the lines of reverse engineering and so on. So, when I talk about stuff, I really should use the term something like the word product. But what is a product? We're surrounded by products. If you think about this, everywhere you look, there's something that has been made by us, except nature. If it's not, if it's not nature growing, or something like the, the rocks or, that, or the ground, it's been made by us. So really, everything around us, this table, the carpet, this projector, this screen, they're all products. But what is a product, when we really think about it? So, here's a product. The compact disc, the CD, is a product. The CD was actually developed by Sony and Philips. It was a joint venture between those two companies to come up with this compact disc, this CD. So that way you can get your music. And so as a product, we've got to produce this CD and then just distribute it. It's, it's an engineered product. So in order to produce this, and in fact, my, my first job after I've got my engineering degree, I worked for Sony Music in their first compact disc plant back in the 1980s. So if you think about what goes on with this compact disc in order to make this CD, you've also got this injection molding machine because the CD is made out of plastic. And so in order to make that CD, you've got to injection mold this plastic. And so in the injection molding machine is also a product. Now this is a product that isn't sold to you, the consumer, but is sold to the businesses that would need to use that to make other stuff. So it's called a business-to-business -business product, but it's still a product just the same. Now my job was in the manufacturing of these CDs. And so this manufacturing process, this whole plant, is a combination of not just in one injection molding machine, but a whole bunch of injection molding machines and a whole bunch of other machines, including robots that move these CDs around as you're making them. And so that whole process can be viewed as a product. But what, what you're really after is not the CD itself, it's actually the music. And so the music that is what you're actually looking to consume as the consumer. You want to listen to the music. And so it's really all about the music that you want to get. And if you think about it with the way a, a CD works is that the music is encoded on the CD. It's just held there with, as a bunch of ones and zeros. That your CD player then interprets, it reads it like a computer, it reads it and turns it into music. And so for, uh, um, the CDs were really came out about the middle 80s. And so for about 25 years, that's how we listened to music. That was a big thing about the CDs. We used the CD that went in the player that interpreted it and gave us our music. Well then, along comes iTunes. And what iTunes does, it, it says, well, you know what? It's just, it's just a bunch of uh, ones and zeros encoded um, to make this music. And so this software here, iTunes, says, well, we don't really need the CD. We can just get the code and interpret the music ourselves." And so iTunes takes that, those ones and zeros and codes it and, and takes it and creates the music for us. 
And so now we can listen to the music directly on our computer. And it does a lot of other things for us. It allows us to organize all this music. So we don't need the CDs anymore. And it also connects to the internet so we can buy them directly. Because the CD isn't really what we're after. What we're after is the music. The CD was the medium to bring us the music. Well, I don't want to just sit at my computer and listen to my music. So I go out and I get myself an iPod. And now, I can then take that, and they take iTunes, and an iPod's just a small computer, but it's a special purpose computer. It doesn't need to be big like a big computer you guys sit down to in your computer lab, because it's only there to do one thing, and that's play music. But iTunes is loaded onto that. And now, because it's only doing one thing, it's small enough that I can carry it around. And that's a product. And then if we, you, now you've learned how to take stuff apart, so, if I opened up my iPod and looked inside, which I'd, I'm not suggesting you do this, but if you did this and you open it up and you look inside, what you'd see is a bunch of uh, circuits and some chips and things, but you'd also see this hard drive. Now the hard drive is just very similar to the hard drive that's in your computer. That's where the information is actually stored. That's where the music is actually stored, is onto this hard drive. And Actually, you know, that's the, the older iPods. Now you've got the new ones like the Nano. They don't use a hard drive. It's all saved on a chip. But um, the ones that have like 80 gigs, you know, that save lots of music, they all use a hard drive. And if you think of, look, take a look at this hard drive, you see this disk, and that disk is where the music is stored. And that looks an awful lot like that up there. And so this hard drive, see, Apple, they don't make the hard drive. They don't need to make the hard drive. There are companies that make hard drives, so they buy the hard drive off of someone else. And so that's a product, and it's called an original equipment manufacturer. So they make stuff that they sell to Apple to put inside their iPods that they sell to you. And then this manufacturer of the hard drive, and now we're back over here. And at the, man the hard drive manufacturing process. And so all these things are products. Some of them are to the consumer, and some you don't see, but they're all products, and they're all done by engineers. And you know, if you start to think a little deeper about this, about what um, Apple does, you know, in terms of their products, what they're trying to sell you is this and this. They give you this free in order to sell you these other two things. That doesn't make it, a, that doesn't make it any less of a product. It's a software product. So, given that this is our product, well, what's this all have to do with what you guys were up to? So what's the connection to this web quest, all right? So just to rehash, you're doing this web quest, all right? And in this web quest, you each took on different roles. The, the engineer, the archeologist, the historian, the anthropologist, right? And, and you went out and you, and you studied things on the internet and then, you know, you got yourself this GPS system, these nice little GPS, and, and you got all excited because it was a nice day anyway, and you got to go outside, and you went looking for treasure with this thing because you weren't going to find something. And what was it? What year was it? 3008, 3, you, right? A thousand years into the future. And you're going to look for something that represented an artifact from our time. And so you're all excited. What, what's this artifact going to be? And so what did you find? A little paper towel? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you start getting all excited and you say, well, gosh, you know, here I am talking about iPods. Well, iPod. Maybe we'll find an iPod. Yeah. He found a stapler. And he said, you know, a stapler? This is the year 3008. I'm looking back at the year 2008, thinking about the artifacts that are important and critical to this time. And what do I find? A stapler. What does a stapler have to do with our time? And what's it have to do with social studies? But when you started to look into what an archaeologist does, 
What an archaeologist does 